platypus, a small egg-laying mammal that attempts to mate frequently but spends most of its time alone. Man, an adult male human. Platypus man, an adult male human that attempts to mate frequently but spends most of its time alone. Lou? Uh-huh. Lou? Mm. Lou, we're having that pesky audio problem again with the <sighs> public service announcement. What would you like to do? I'll handle it. Bring it in, Bill. This is a test of your emergency broadcast system. For the next 60 seconds, this station will broadcast a tone that will notify you in case of an actual emergency. enough. <laughs> From New York, it's time for Cooking with the Platypus Man. And now here he is, the Platypus Man himself, Richard Jenny. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, welcome to the show. I'm Richard Jenny. We're shooting in New York, but hey, who isn't? Any of you guys out there watching have ever wondered just what is the difference between food and cuisine? Yeah, I've never really wondered that either, but here's the main difference. Food is something you get at a diner from a guy named Vic who's like, Hey, how you doing? My name's Vic. Stay away from the meatloaf. I had it for lunch. It gave me the trots. <laughs> cuisine is something you get at a bistro from a guy named Blaine who's more like, Hi, my name's Blaine. I'll be your waiter. Our special tonight is shredded llama sphincter and candied blowhole, pressed into a hockey glove, attached to a rope, swung to your table, and set on fire. <laughs> So tonight, I'm going to show you that the most simple and conventional of meals can be the most satisfying. Same can be said for relationships, huh? Wild and exotic is not necessarily better. Which uh, brings me to my date I had a couple of weeks ago. Our producer here, Lou Golombuski, set me up with his son's second grade teacher. She taught me a few things, like... School sure has changed since I was a kid. Don't talk. You think maybe we're going too fast? Do you? No. By the way, my name is Richard. <laughs> Here, Mr. Mouse, a nice fresh piece of fromage. Time to come on out, little fella. Uh, it's a shame you have to kill the poor little critter. I know, Lou, but I can't have it in a bar. They're a health risk. They carry disease. Hi, how you doing? Come on in. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with Paige? There's only one thing that sends her off the deep end like that. Guys, you remember my parents? <laughs> Jack and Marjorie, you gave a bad tip to the cab driver. Yeah, where he comes from, you could buy a Scud missile with what I gave him. Mom, Dad, focus. You know Tommy, right? Hey, how you doing? And you remember Lou? Right, the Jewish fellow. Shalom. So, what brings you to town, Mrs. McAllister? Smart money's on a broom. <laughs> Now we're here to see Cats. Ah, good musical. Oh, not the musical. Sheldon Cats, my doctor. I have a prostate the size of a beefsteak tomato. <laughs> you know, hey, it's gonna happen to you guys eventually. Here's his card. Introduce yourselves. Why are you discussing such personal things? Please, they're Paige's friends. If they're Paige's friends, why haven't they introduced her to a nice guy so she can get married? <laughs> Don't you know any eligible guys that Paige could... Don't you know any eligible guys that Paige could marry? Uh... Mom, Dad, why don't you have a seat right there and I'll get us some drinks, okay? Shame. Shame! Uh, go 
God, they're driving me crazy. Uh, they really know how to push my buttons, especially this husband thing. They're obsessed by it. Paige, you're an adult. Go and tell them how you feel. You're not going to rush into a marriage just to make them happy. Yeah, lose right. Stand up to them. What the hell's the matter go, with you? Go, go in go, there. Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> Mom, Dad, something I have to tell you. We do, too. Your father was just saying that maybe we ought to move back here from Florida, at least until you find a nice young man. So what did you want to tell us? I'm engaged. <laughs> That was amazing. It was fantastic. If you were an Indian, your name would mean, oh, God. I'm glad you enjoyed it. No. Enjoyment is something that Opie gets when he goes fishing with Pa. <laughs> that was... That was incredible. It was memorable. It was the kind of experience that... Poets write about. Hey, this one's pretty hot. And it rhymes. Print it. I should be going home. Oh, oh. I have to get up early tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, Beth. I mean, who's that the best sex you ever had or what? Who's nice? <laughs> nice? Very pleasant. Pleasant? <laughs> Richard, we had a good time. Why don't we just leave it at that? Because there was fruit involved, that's why. You're not going to drop this, are you? No, I'm not. We're both adults. We just made love. Now grade it. Okay. Okay, if you really want to know, I think it was a little... conventional. <laughs> conventional? You thought that was conventional? Yes. <laughs> a pigeon landed on the balcony. It participated. You see, that's what I was afraid of. Now I've hurt your feelings. No. I just meant that maybe in the future we could uh, spice things up a little, that's all. Richard! Paige, what the hell are you doing here? Don't ask any questions, just play along. The second time I've been told that tonight. <laughs> so happy for you. Mr. and Mrs. McAllister. Yeah, we always thought with you two living next door to each other, this might happen. <laughs> yeah. I just told Mom and Dad about our engagement. Our engagement? Oh, our engagement. That's just very sudden spur of the moment yes. type of thing. Yeah. Welcome to the family. You've made me so happy, darling. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well. Uh. Well. This is more like it. Who's she? Who's she? She's, um, the cleaning lady. And Paige's parents bought that story? Are you sure you want to marry this girl, Richard? The family doesn't sound too bright. <laughs> Forget about them. I want to hear about your date with Miss Garland. And don't leave out any details. Hey, hey, sorry, Lou. You know, I'm not the type of guy who would kiss, fondle, have incredible sex, take a nap, go out, buy some condoms, come back, have some more incredible sex, and tell you. Man, now we'll never find out if he slept with her. You slept with Miss Garland? Not a wink. He slept with Miss Garland. Is that a problem, Lou? No, no, of course not. It's just the, the idea of him sleeping with, with Lou Jr.'s second grade teacher is just so oddly titillating. <laughs> How was she? Well, you guys familiar with Sharon Stone and the movie Basic Instinct? Yeah. Miss Garland could help her come out of her shell. <laughs> Jeez, I don't believe it. Now I know why Lou Jr. refuses to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> So, it was pretty much a perfect night, huh? Yeah, you know, it's almost. Almost perfect. Almost? Yeah. She said one thing. She said I was... Short, awkward, poorly toned? <laughs> no, she... She said I was, uh... Conventional. I mean, I'm not... 
conventional, am I? <laughs> what? Well, maybe a little. Well, how? You've always been. Remember Halloween when we were kids and we went trick-or-treating together? Yeah. You went as a ghost every year. Every year, the same white sheet with the two eye holes. <laughs> the other kids used to beat us up. Just for being conventional? No, we lived in Harlem. <laughs> Big deal, that's one example. You go to Ben and Jerry's, you order vanilla. You spend exactly 25% of your salary on rent. You sing along to cheap elevator music. And you like Michael Bolton. I just said that. <laughs> I don't care what you guys say, you're both nuts. I am not conventional. And that's when Beth suggested that we should continue the games on the rocking horse. I hope I'm not shocking you. Not at all, my son. Actually, the sins you've just described are rather conventional. As soon as I got your message, what's going on? The universe is expanding and I'm not. What? Beth, you were right. You were so right. I'm too conventional, you know? I need to broaden my horizons, right? I gotta go. I gotta do. I gotta be. I gotta pain just now. You've been drinking. No, no, mm, 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 no, no. I am in a great space right now. I mean, this is a whole new beginning. With your help, we can have a whole new Richard by Friday. Okay, Richard, but, uh, we're gonna have to set a few ground rules. Anything. I mean it, unless you put your complete trust in me. This is never gonna work. I'm there. Anything else? A number I can contact in case of emergency. <laughs> Mom's probably wrong. <laughs> There you go. Let the games begin. They already have. <laughs> Did I leave my glasses here? Am I interrupting? No. It... Sometimes she tries to get out without doing the windows. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me. I, I spoke to you last week about my sins. Well, I don't usually guess people's weight in here, my son. <laughs> I just thought my sins might have stuck out in your mind because they were so, you know. Oh, Mr. Conventional is back. <laughs> Do you remember Beth, the girl that I was telling you about? Sure. Girls like Beth gave me in a job. <laughs> okay, well, lots happened since we last spoke. So get comfortable. What happened? Pretty much my week. 
Well, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Tommy, let me have a beer and pour one for yourself. It's on me. How come you're in such a good mood? Lou Jr. got in big trouble at school today. Big trouble. Oh, and this makes you happy? Three words, my friend. Parent-teacher conference. <laughs> I had a hot teacher when I was in the ninth grade. Yeah? We dated. She went out with a ninth grader? I was 18. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I think you want the bar down to... <laughs> Richard, is that you? No, it's Cher, you moron. <laughs> It's me. What are you doing here? Why are you dressed like that? Wait, your collar's crooked. Wait a minute. <laughs> Beth wanted to know if I was uninhibited enough to go out in public like this. It's a test. Uh-huh. Just a test. Richard? Louder, Lou. I don't think they heard you in Cairo. <laughs> Get a load of you. I always wondered what happened to my old sofa. <laughs> Just get off my back, okay? Hey, I'm sorry. It's just the sight of you dressed in, in leathers. It's just so oddly titillating. Oh, oh. That's it. Test over. I fail. Not a total loss, though. She may want to punish me. <laughs> hey, Richard, just so you know, when we said you were conventional, we didn't say it was a bad thing. Hey, Paige. Jack. Marjorie. The outfit, am I right? <laughs> the outfit. There's a perfectly simple explanation for the outfit. You see, I am a pervert. <laughs> Paige, I'm sorry. I can't keep this charade up anymore. Oh, it's okay. What's going on here, Paige? I told you that I was marrying Richard to get you off my back. You think we're on your back? Uh, like two humps on a camel. <laughs> Excuse us for wanting you to be happy. You don't want me to be happy. You just want me to be married. Then never the two shall meet. <laughs> what the hell makes you two think I'm not happy? Paige, please, relax, will you? People are looking at you. <laughs> and did it ever occur to you that I might like being a sports writer? That I might like my independence? That I might be happy living alone? You are? Of course not! <laughs> but the added pressure from you isn't helping. Well, we need to change, Jack. You do? Of course. I'm not flying back home to Florida to dress like this. Come, <laughs> Mother. Coming, Mother. I've had a very long day. <laughs> enjoying yourself. No, 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 no. It's not that. Not that at all. Well, what is it that you'd like to do? I don't know. Something simple that we haven't tried yet, you know, like dinner, movie, the missionary position. <laughs> oh. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, I, everything we've done up to now has been great. Believe me, I'll never be able to feed another pigeon without wondering if we shared something intimate. <laughs> what are you getting at? Well, it's just that all the gratuitous sex, it just seems a little gratuitous. You know? I mean, I mean we spent so much time thinking about where we're going to do it, and not enough thinking about why. Well, don't you like being adventuresome? Well, yeah, yeah. I just think that maybe now is time for us to embark on a new adventure, you know? Man, woman, falling in love. Maybe, maybe that's the real adventure. It's different. It's not for me, but different. Beth? 
cockpit. Where are you going? To the cockpit. I saw the captain checking me out when we boarded. But, but I'm stuck! is ever going to explain this. There's the captain again. We should be climbing above this any minute. Oh, God, that's good. Beth! <laughs> Mr. McAllister. Richard? What's gone rotten in your pumpkin, son? So... I learned two things that day. One, sometimes being conventional is okay. And two, if you fly first class, they'll overlook almost anything. <laughs> and now, fellow platypus men, a meal as simple and conventional as they get. Steak and potatoes. You tried the rest, now go back to the best. But keep watching me. See you next week. You take it for granted. Don't. It's a culture to avoid medical emergency. He must directly to sick bay. What's happening, doctor? He's going into a coma. If Neelix has any chance of surviving, we have to act fast. The crew of the Voyager is being kidnapped. His lungs have been removed. One body part at a time. On the next Star Trek Voyager, the adventure continues next Monday on UPN.